And whenever I receive an invitation, the first thing that comes into my mind, if I am willing to accept it, how am I going to tie this to materials, to, to the topic that I really like talking about? And I really somehow managed to tie it to everything. And today's topic is hybrid futures. And hopefully, I will be able to tie it. And at the end, I will uh, lead the stage to be to the one of the greatest philosophers of our time, I would say. And you, know, and you will see how I manage in all those years to tying those different concepts to materials. Um, one in eight women experiences breast cancer in the world. And thanks to the developing technologies and improved diagnostic techniques, more and more women can be diagnosed at earlier stages of her life. And the survival rate from breast cancer has increased steadily in the last decade. And the happiness of the woman, happiness of the patient after the surgery, very much scales with the medical and the cosmetic success of the surgery itself. And that is exactly where we step in as surgitate. We produce these synthetic composite models, which is actually a hybrid model as well, that surgeons can work on. So they can work on these breasts. They can practice their suturing skills. They can practice their cutting skills. They can basically take a part out of this breast and then close it afterwards. And it will hold the suturing, and it will help them to develop uh, their skills. So we are very much willing to uh, create this learning platform so that we will have better surgeons in training. And uh, so today I will be talking about how come we are making these breasts and how did this story evolve. As a materials engineer, usually people ask me how do I make this, how do I fabricate this, and this time that this was, you know, can you make breasts? And I said, yes, I can make breasts because, you know, uh, I am a polymer scientist engineer by training. So, you know, if you are going to make breasts, you are not going to make them out of ceramics or metals. It has to be polymers. So I said, yes. And I went back to uh, my laboratory and start working on uh, the formulations for the breast. The, the one who asked me the question was a thoracic surgeon, as you have seen his picture over there. And then, you know, uh, what we were doing is he was telling me what he wants, and I was going back to my lab and producing uh, a model that would please surgeons. And, you know, if you are willing to make breasts, then you need to have molds which are shaped as breasts. And you know, the first thing that might come to your mind might be the bowls in your kitchen. Uh, but apparently, that breasts need to have some undercut to because such that the surgeons can work on them. So they really need to look uh, like a breast. So bowls won't work. And then, uh, you know, uh, Sabanj University is a very interdisciplinary place. And thanks to that, I got connected with a, a Master of Arts students uh, in visual arts, uh, Eje. And she was apparently working on an art project in which uh, she hosts all the women in her house. And while they are talking about womanhood, sexuality, motherhood, she was taking the molds of their breasts out of gypsum. And you know, it was one of the best engineering moments in my life when she showed me a box full of breast molds out of gypsum. You know, imagine that uh, look on my face. Yes, they are there. They don't even need to be made. They are there. So we started working together. And uh, when we were working, of course, we do the iterations on the product. So I was bringing all these breast models, phantoms, uh, to the approval of Barkin. And from time to time, it is, you know, it is in a parking lot. So I'm telling him, look, I have the new stuff. And then we are opening the truck. He's testing them, cutting them over. And, you know, he's giving me his um, comments. And sometimes it is a restaurant with four breasts lying on a table with food. And the waiters are kind of upset. These freaks are here again. And, you know, <laughs> they, you know, our table is served much faster than the, you know, a neighboring table. <laughs> and you know, uh, and it was fun. And uh, in the end, we managed to get a breast prototype, breast model prototype, uh, so that we can test it in an international workshop that is organized by Senaturk, uh, an Oncoplast workshop. And after this beta test, we get very positive feedback from the surgeons that attend that workshop, that, you know, the ones who used our models to get the training and to give the training. So we were very encouraged. And uh, this encouraged us is actually, this encouragement um, 
uh, allowed me to contact Sabanji University uh, and telling that, look, I have this new product, we would like to have a company on it. And Innovant is actually the first uh, seed fund accelerator company in Turkey, and we really got the support uh, from them. And uh, the general manager, the by then general manager of uh, Innovant, Mr. Omer Hisuzroğlu, made a very critical move and introduced me, founder of uh, Arya Women's Investment Platform and also the president of Farplus. And, um, you know, Arya, as many of you know, brings together the, you know, it, it helps you to complement your talents. And being in the plastic manufacturing, and now I am doing a plastic um, product, it was a great match. In the end, Farplus, through Arya, decided to invest into this product and this company, and we have founded the company in November 2014. And um, so in the end, uh, we believe that we have this product which is going to change the way medical education is given. Now we are providing this platform which is sustainable, reliable. You don't need to you know, store it in chemicals. Uh, it is hygienic. And these kind of things, I believe, is going to really help uh, the change uh, of the medical education. And. Uh, we do not only have breast models right now, we also have a skin model, for instance, which uh, the surgeons can do the sure uh, practice on it. It is under tension as well, so it looks like uh, a real tissue once you basically make a cut on it. Self-diagnosis is important. I don't know how many of you are checking yourselves in the shower, but it is really something that we should do. So we also have this not-for-profit product that is a model for training for the women, for the women, especially for the underserved areas, both in Turkey and internationally. This product has malign and uh, benign tumors in it, so that, you know, once you are teaching women how to control themselves, they could feel that mass under the skin. And now we are collaborating with uh, city health uh, directorates, municipalities, we are really working on organizing events uh, such that we are going to provide the model and experts are going to teach women, especially underserved women, on how to control uh, themselves. And hopefully we will be involved in a project in June with, uh, you know, women's uh, prison in Bakırköy and teaching women how to control uh, themselves. And actually, we are looking for uh, partners who have the same vision as us and who are willing to contribute to this field. So much, so good for search date. Once you see an organ, which is breast, on the table, some people really like to touch it. <laughs> and some people don't. And apparently, as, I, uh, as of today, I learned that people are sneaking into my lab and touching the breasts. And I decided to make a head count from now on every day you know, uh, so that things don't walk away. Uh, but then, you know, there is this biomorphic form, there is this synthetic structure which looks like an organ or synthetic surface, and in some people it creates an association, and in some people it creates a dissociation, right? Some people would really don't like to see that skin-like porous surfaces. On the other hand, some others are really would like to squeeze them. So, uh, and that is what we learned when these breasts were lying over in uh, Ejez's uh, studio. So, we uh, got into talking, like, you know, uh, I think the digital realm, thanks to the gaming industry, like, you could be someone else, right? Uh, you know, with all these Kinects, Oculus, and the gaming industry, you could really create a virtual world for yourself. But, Tactile experiences in our life, like, you know, the interactive surfaces, the interactive points that we can go, touch, and experience different physical involvement uh, are not there yet. And somehow it hasn't echoed in that uh, art and design. Especially we know that there is pneumatics and, you know, there, is, there are microfluidics and all these different technologies which scientists and engineers know how to operate, but we do not see them in the you know, art and design scene. I'm not saying it, we did it, but actually we made a shot at it. And actually, I would like you to meet Brawl, a uh, breathing wall, which is an interactive surface, which is made of nine tiles, and once you basically go and touch it, it responds to you.
what we are trying to do is actually create a medium uh, on which creative people, designers, engineers, K-12 students and such can start talking on, they, that they could engage physically and then we can then deci decide, you know, what can we do uh, from there. And that was my story with Surgitate and, you know, my initial attempts at, you know, at the interface of this, you know, what we do in materials engineering and at the interface of design. Hope you like it. And, you know, as I promised in the beginning of my talk, uh, then I will leave the stage with, uh, again, you know, uh, with the reason that I could tie all these things together. <laughs>